I did feel a little bit more exhausted than usual. I couldn't really put my finger on it. It's very complicated because a few doctors had said to me that I had chronic fatigue and that mm. had been going on for a year or so. I feel like chronic fatigue is, you know, in the really like minor cases, maybe just means that there's more investigation needed on why you've got such low energy levels and not like specifically that diagnosis, but it was, there was something going on. So I'm never really gonna know because now, because I've gone through such a like physical journey with it and I'm looking after myself so well, of course those symptoms have subsided. I'm never gonna know. Like all mm. of the oncologists are like, no, absolutely not. You wouldn't have felt ill. They all say okay. that to me. But people who love and know me really well say like, no, there was something going on there. Hi, Envisionaires. Welcome to the Envisionaire podcast. This is the podcast where we envision living our best lives, ones filled with unlimited possibilities. We do this by exploring everyday topics related to health, wealth, community, and love. podcast is for information purposes only and should not be considered to be medical, legal, tax, financial, or other professional advice. This podcast does not encourage or endorse any illegal activity. We are not responsible for any losses, damages, or liability that may arise from the information in this podcast. The views explored in the podcast may not always be those of the host. On today's episode, we are going to be focusing on the health pillar of the podcast as we have Bianca Mayu speaking about her health journey into alternative medicine when she faced a devastating diagnosis of breast cancer at the age of 36. For clarity, Bianca and I are not health practitioners. We are not preaching anti-traditional medical practices, nor are we proposing the exclusive use of alternative medicines to treat serious illnesses. But my hope for this podcast is to share her personal journey using both traditional medical practices and alternative treatments to treat her cancer diagnosis, which left her feeling empowered as the patient. I hope that we will all feel a little bit more inspired and empowered to deal with our own health matters after this podcast episode. So a very warm welcome, Bianca, to Thank the Envisioner you. podcast. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's nice well, to be here. Oh, thank you so much for for coming on and yeah. um, and just sharing your story. I shared yeah. my story with you within five seconds of meeting you, didn't I? <laughs> I just found myself like in the queue to get into the International Women's Podcast Awards, wasn't it? And yes. then suddenly, like by the time we'd got in, I told you everything. So there must be something <laughs> about you. And now I'm on a podcast about to talk about a lot of really private stuff. So there's something about you, Nicole. I don't know what it is. Oh, <laughs> Bianca, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. You're going to endorse me. No, I you can feel empowered about that, okay? <laughs> I, I 100% feel empowered by that. Thank you so much. That's really kind. And um, and I always love hearing those little compliments. But um, I, I obviously... I appreciate you being on to talk about this, but I think before we get into obviously, you know, your, your health journey, it'd be really, really um, amazing for the listeners to know a bit about your background. I have read your bio and I have to say, you have such an impressive creative background. Yes. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun with my career, I guess, haven't I? <laughs> well, see, so I'm going to tell everyone like, like this is so impressive. You've worked in the music and events industry for over 10 years. You've worked in Ibiza, LA, Shanghai with some of the best electronic DJs, producers, and music directors. So how did you land this amazing career in a creative oh. space like that? Oh, a career like that is just a life journey though, isn't it? You know, it's like, yeah. there's no kind of rule book on, like no one does the apprenticeship for that. No. <laughs> there's, there's no internship for that. Um, no. I think it was just university, running raves, loving every minute of it. And then realizing that I had like a real interest in the artists that were playing for me. And a couple of people were like, oh, you should be an agent. So I was like, mm. that sounds cool. <laughs> So I did that for a bit and then I did management and then I've done events and, and all sorts. Um, and it's, wow. I've been freelance for a lot of it. So I think that's not a very structured life plan. 
Yeah. And, you know, some years have been really fruitful and some have been not at all. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think in a creative career, it's kind of helpful to do that because you learn so much. Like there's nothing I haven't done, you know, like music programming in Saudi Arabia, like events on airplanes, like, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing, there's yeah. nothing left. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that was, yeah, that was really helpful. And, and you know, th things things are more relaxed nowadays. I guess, like, in electronic music, there was a lot of rave schedules, a lot of 4 a.m. set times with my artists, a lot of traveling, a lot yeah. of traveling, touring, living in Berlin, living in Barcelona, you know, it's, wow. it was, like, it was wild and fun. Yeah. And I, and I say was because it's not that that's over, because I'm, gearing up to travel again but it's it's the yeah that that wildness is like a really like unique part of my life I look at and I'm just like whoa I couldn't do that right now <laughs> <laughs> do you know I feel the same way about my political career I mean it's obviously like yeah. the other the other side of the no, spectrum it's probably but... just as intense to be honest yeah. yeah 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 like the sort of like going on like election like touring and you know when you're the MPs running and you know running for either whatever position they're running for and you're just like yeah. You're there almost like a, I assume like a groupie, but not, you know, yeah, like yeah, you're, yeah. yeah, it's just like you're there, groupie. you're with them. Exactly. Um, but so like, so when you started though, like you started as an agent and yes. were you working for a company or was it just kind yeah. of your own? Yeah. Okay. No, no, how. I did. I did. I, I joined, um, Coda agency, which is now paradigm, which is actually now Wasserman group. Okay. Um, so it was, it was a, it was a big agency. Um, okay. I had my own roster of like techno acts. And wow. Yeah, it was it was fun. I think I just kind of jumped around a bit, which I'm sure any career coach would tell you not to do. And your CV should not say you left everywhere after 12 months. <laughs> but mine yeah. does. <laughs> but mine then does. I, I feel like that those sorts of bursts of obviously like building your career and it probably just contributes to you having this like range of skill sets that you can bring from like the management side the creative, but then also like project management and running like overall, like running events and everything. So I don't think it's wasted. That's for sure. I think I was always really prioritizing, absolutely loving my job. So mm -hmm. whenever I was working somewhere and, and in that kind of job, you end up doing a million different things. Like in management specifically, it's like you end up doing a million different types of things. And then Mm -hmm. you would spot something that you really like and you know maybe there would be some things that you don't like that would start to grate on you after a while and and so I would pivot for the next role a little bit to focus more on that thing I found yeah. so yeah it was just like a constant scramble for like the most enjoyable part of my kind of skill set I guess <laughs> amazing I mean what I, I don't think you're going to regret that like I mean no I think having yeah. that yeah. yeah 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 and so um on obviously this like very chaotic sort of work, work lifestyle. Total chaos, absolute mayhem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so when did you, when did you start feeling unwell and, or actually get the diagnosis for the breast cancer? Yeah. So I just finished three months in Saudi Arabia, loving working there mm -hmm. was kind of, had decided that I just wanted to like live in the world and like not have a home. Like I was probably like, I'd really gone down the rabbit hole on that whole kind of structure. And, um, but I came home. I, at the same time though, I met my partner. So that also kind of grounded me to London for a minute. Cause I was like quite happy with that. Um, and that was like March, 2022. And mm. then in June of that year, I just felt a little lump and I think I knew kind of instantly um my mom had been through it I don't know it was like I just I never really was like oh it'll be fine I was like no no that's not fine um wow so we went to Glastonbury <laughs> had a really great time I was quite aware of it the whole way I hadn't mentioned anything to him yet actually but I told him halfway through um oh. and but yeah we had we had a great time all my friends were there. It was a really gorgeous send off into, uh, yeah, coming home the next week, going in. I think it's like the phases of it, like the deeper in you get, you know, like the first appointment where they say, oh, actually that 
that does feel like something and the ultrasound does make it look like it's dense because that's how they tell that it could right. be something and then okay. they're like so we'll, we'll biopsy and then it's like come back in next week and we'll tell you what the biopsy said and, and at every phase there's like layers to unpick yeah. and that's yeah. basically what the whole kind of like first phase of that of that is but yeah so it was yeah I don't I don't remember much of the meeting where they told me that that is what had happened yeah it was like you, you know those movies where the the sound starts sounding like everyone else is underwater like something out of like you know like a film where everyone suddenly started tripping or something yeah <laughs> and, they're, blah, 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 and you're like the wow. only person I could hear was 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 my partner I yeah. remember looking at him and being like is this actually happening and I, I really felt like he's the only person who could hear me and we weren't and it was a very really out surreal of body, really yes. out of body yeah and yeah. so okay so let's go back to a little bit of like when you felt it yourself yeah and you said you knew was it just like mm. intuitively you felt is it because you know you said your mother had had gone through it so you kind of felt it or did you feel like I, I guess my question is did you also feel unwell in general like did you have like tiredness or were you feeling generally mm. unwell or was it just the the fact that you felt a, a lump I did feel a little bit more exhausted than usual I couldn't really put my finger on it it's very complicated because a few doctors had said to me that I had chronic fatigue um, and that had been going on for a year or so. Okay. I feel like chronic fatigue is, you know, in the really like minor cases, maybe just means that there's more investigation needed on why you've got such low energy levels and not like specifically that diagnosis. But it was, there was something going on. So I'm never really going to know because now, because I've gone through such a like physical journey with it and I'm looking after myself so well, of course, those symptoms have subsided I'm never going to know. Like all mm. of the oncologists are like, no, absolutely not. You wouldn't have felt ill. They all say okay. that to me. Oh, uh, but people who love and know me really well say like, no, there was something going on there. So who wow. knows? Yeah, I was having yeah. like dizzy spells. and um, But okay. I, I really, really don't know if that's what was going on. I really don't know. That's fascinating because we don't, I guess we don't really talk about, you know, you hear a woman say, I found a lump. And then you just don't know like in what, okay, so is that, was that it? And then that's, you know, and, and so I guess if, if ever a woman is listening and they feel a lump, should they just go straight to the doctor? A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because yeah. you, it's, it's, it's not like a super long process and it's not invasive either. It's just an ultrasound. That's the first thing they do. And then if they want to biopsy it from there, they will, but it's it's nothing to be afraid of it's not a horrible process like it's just it's worse to know you waited like you would never want to be in that position to know that you yeah. just were like oh I'm sure that will be fine and then a year and a half later because it really is about how early you catch it it and is how yeah. developed it is and you know if you can just give yourself the best chance possible and also so many people everyone rings me now when they feel something and I tell them to go in and I have to talk them through it all and like honestly every single one of them has been fine you know it's like it doesn't mean instantly like that that's what's going on um but yeah never wait never ever ever never wait just go in straight away I think some people are just like nervous about the mm. it's the fear of like yeah. knowing that something could go wrong or something could be wrong and then you go yeah um for me though like once I think something could be wrong then that's in my head so it's like at that point I would rather find out something's wrong and go into dealing with it mode or eliminate the thing and be told everything's fine so I can forget about it yeah. the limbo bit where you're like but it could be it could be it could be it could be mm. like that's almost the worst bit because you're not doing anything yes with yes. it and that's I feel like when you when you've got no, no action to take or no control to take over the situation, then like that's almost the hardest bit. So but then what would you say to someone who like feels like they distrust the system, like the medical doctors and stuff? I mean, with something like this, you can't mistrust a picture, you know, like they are taking mm -hmm. a photograph of what's inside your body and mm -hmm. um, they are taking a biopsy and that's going to like a proper lab. 
And, yeah. you know, the, the, the science and the research around cancer is incredible. And mm -hmm. none of it's a lie, you know, like mm -hmm. it's all true, especially in the diagnosis side of things like and, and the amount of information that they're able to give you now on the receptors, like so you understand like what within your body was feeding it to grow and like how old it is, what stage it's at, what grade. Really? I mean, there's just once they take it out, they can tell you how how long it's how long it's been there. Yeah, in in that in that phase after the surgery when they really go into it and analyze it to bits. It's fascinating. I, I mean, I definitely I always trust a doctor. Like it's not, then they're really not out to get you. There are things about the medical system that I think it's just about like deciding what you want to take from it and what you might not want to take from it and still knowing that you know enough as well but I wouldn't say for anyone to like mistrust doctors and use that as a reason to maybe not enter the kind of process of diagnosis with them because the diagnosis phase is fail safe they know exactly what they're looking for the technology is incredible and it's much better to know where you stand for sure oh that's good advice hopefully that appeases anyone who's listening who yeah. <laughs> who feels a little apprehensive I know there are some people especially in certain communities I think right. um there is like a inherent distrust because of past wrongs mm -hmm. maybe that were that were done I'm, I'm thinking more in the states I don't know about in the UK but yeah. I definitely know that like in the African-American community there mm -hmm. has been um there were there were like used as like guinea pigs for certain by doctors yeah and, like there's been a and lot I of think, scandals I get I yeah. get why there's I get why there's mistrust in the kind of medical profession as a whole I do get mm -hmm. that yeah. But hopefully, hopefully, like you said, now that the technology and and we've advanced um, where mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about that, that sort of stuff happening again. Um, uh, yeah. And so you mentioned you mentioned your your boyfriend, your partner. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I never know what to call it, you know, like I know. <laughs> boyfriend, <laughs> I know. partner. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, are we able to know his name? Yes, his name's Johnny. Johnny. Okay. Yeah. So Johnny um sounds like a stand-up guy. Uh, because <laughs> you mentioned because he didn't leave. Well, didn't yeah, leave. you that was something you mentioned to me when I yeah. met you. I said, Oh my god, how long have you with your with your partner? And you were like literally like three months before the diagnosis. Yeah. And I was like, What? I was like, Wow, incredible. I know. And so it was, it was yeah. unfair. It was unfair. We had our honeymoon stolen from us. Um yeah, yeah it was it was difficult, you know, because I think when you, you know, when you're first with someone, you just want to show them like the best of yourself and you mm -hmm. want to have like all the fun and, you know, like I'm a, like a human girl, you know, I wanted to like look pretty and be really fun and cute and like, you know, like just like anyone would. And then suddenly it was like, no, 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 you're going to have to deal with the deepest thing ever. Yeah. Um, obviously the surgery in particular just having a double mastectomy mm -hmm. that also holds a lot in it you know I was like okay cool so like <laughs> how am I gonna remain sexy mm -hmm. in this new relationship where in mm -hmm. the first phase that stuff is still important to you um and also do this and like even just like feel it in in myself you know like I was always very aware of like how to how to do that which is probably a mad thing to have to think about when going through that process and I think a lot of people who are in longer settled more serious relationships mm -hmm. wouldn't have to and that might have been quite nice to not have to think about that extra layer yeah yeah so how did you guys navigate that though like obviously you said he was with you yeah. which is so amazing so he was with you he's hearing everything mm. what happens after you guys leave that appointment are you just in oh, God. like I, I feel emotional just... I feel like emotional oh my god I was just like in the street like kind of like crying but also shouting at him that I was only 12 years old and how could this happen to me obviously mm -hmm. over exaggerating but I really meant it I was just like I'm literally a child because you know how when you grow up you don't really grow up like you don't feel like you've grown up like I, yeah. like I still call myself a girl I don't even call myself a woman yeah 
and I just yeah I was just uh, you know I think he was in total shock bless him and he's he's suddenly having to you know make sure I'm okay but I'm also like is he okay and right. I think that was that was kind of the thing throughout the whole time you know like am I okay is he okay are we okay like is this okay do you know what I mean <laughs> Um, that sounds, yeah. I mean, that sounds beautiful the way you put that. I think that's so, <laughs> I think any, any relationship, like therapists would be like, um, I think you guys are good for the yeah. rest of your lives. <laughs> How considerate and thoughtful of each other. You guys are, you guys are, um, no, so but did it's you guys, a challenge yeah. because you, you have to get to know each other through the hardest of times. So perhaps not seeing the best of each other, you know, like, I mean, some people will say to me, like, you were amazing, you were amazing, but, but, but also, also I was vulnerable, also I was weak, also I had, I became very needy, which I've never been in my life before. So that was a new thing. And then I think he was like, I wonder if that's sort of always what she's like. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Is this like how it's gonna, um, <laughs> And and to be honest, I, I I've been I've been vulnerable, more vulnerable than I ever have been, still to this day now. And I feel yeah. like something's kind of clicked in the last couple of months where I'm starting to bring back a little bit of like my 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 energy that I recognise from like the fearless person that I was before. But yes. that's you know that's a year and a half, is it? I don't like count the months or anything. I'm not sure. <laughs> so what I did, it's probably wrong. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's it, it definitely it, it was it was a challenge, and and I guess now it's like we get to get to know each other in like normal circumstances. <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> and how, and how is that? Like, how yeah. is the kind of less, less sort of, let's say vulnerable and requiring, yeah, yeah that sort of affection. Well, I guess and... we're about to find out. Cause I, I really feel like I, I've only really only just stepped out of that mode. If I'm completely honest, Okay, um, this, it goes in phases. Like I don't want anyone to feel like they would be um, feeling a mess the entire time it goes in phases. But I think you just, you go through such a huge personal transformation Mm -hmm. And I think it just makes you feel a little bit like you need to protect yourself from everything yeah. while everything realigns and settles and your head gets in the right place with what you have to live with going forwards in terms of risks and just like there's a lot to kind of deal with. So I think you become a little bit introverted and a little bit like you just want to stay cozy Mm -hmm. keep close people close and everyone else can kind of hang out somewhere else for a bit while you're you know it's just 100 it's a it's a, it's a it's a headspace of safety and protection I think well do you know what's funny it's like I mean it's not the same but um and I've mm. spoken about this before on the podcast but when my father passed so like we got married in December 20 tw December 2020 right so it was like yeah. the height of lockdown and then, um, and then really like suddenly three weeks later or less than three weeks later, my father passed and we knew oh. the health was deteriorating, but like, it was very quick. It was unexpected. We didn't, it was like, but then anyway, yeah. But like, it was like that whole, like you're newlyweds, like, are you having the best time? And I was like, no, actually, this <laughs> no, is obviously really not. Shitty. <laughs> like, this is really crappy and I feel bad and I'm angry at my husband I mean, and I'm lashing out and everything yeah. is not what it's supposed to be, like the honeymoon stage, essentially. Yeah. Granted, okay, we were together for about like a year, two, 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 two to three years before. But anyway, the point is that I know that feeling of like almost wanting to like, you have, to, it's like self-preservation. That's mm. what I called it. I was like, I'm in self-preservation mode. Like, so even like things like banter, mm. I couldn't even be around it. I was so sensitive. I was like... Yeah. get away emotionally like I can't and um so the fragility emotional fragility of it all is that's what I hear kind of you went through yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. although I will say banter is what got me through to be honest Did it? <laughs> <laughs> I think because they're two very different situations I wasn't grieving anything so I didn't have any guilt around finding like joy in a moment and it was like right. that's which is perhaps what you would have felt but I was like any there was just a lot of jokes I know that sounds so bad doesn't it but like 
things got really funny. Like there were just, I think sometimes when you're just so emotionally heightened and, you know, like everyone's super emotional, like all my friends are devastated. Like, you know, every, everyone's like on the edge with it. <laughs> yeah. But then something will just like cut through it all. And just like, I just feel like a little bit of humor through the darkest moments is just the only thing because when you're cracking up, yeah. like genuinely you do forget about the thing for a minute. And this mm. isn't, this sits with you everywhere you go. But but when you're laughing, it's not there anymore. Mm. So that was that was essential. And I do have like the funniest people in the world around me. So I was really lucky for that. <laughs> is, is, is Johnny um very funny? He's hilarious. Oh, He's gonna is he? Stop listening to this. Doing like oh, big stuff. Hi, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't um, think I was gonna go in on him this much, by the way. Let's move on. Let's move on. It's all good. <laughs> no, no, no. No, do you know what? I think it's really helpful because if anyone's listening and they're going through a really difficult like health diagnosis mm. and they have a partner, whether it's a new partner or um someone they've been with, I think it's really, really interesting to talk about it because yeah. you don't really well I don't know you tell me but mm. perhaps are there a lot of resources out there of how to navigate it as a couple how to navigate a very serious health issue Not specifically I don't think no yeah so yeah I would say that like looking back when you're the one who's having a really 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 serious situation happening to you it can just really feel like you're the one suffering mm-hmm but I do think while it's very important that you remain the, the priority, so no one else there should accept anything less than being taken care of at every moment of the day, of course. I think it's also important to just at least communicate over how it's affecting them, just even on an emotional level. You know, it doesn't mean that like you can be like, hey, maybe you should go away for three weeks and like have a party. You know, it's not like that. But just at least be like, are you coping? Like, how yeah. is this making you feel perhaps? Because I think if you miss that, then the communication can can stop for a while and then when when that happens you can kind of get into a little bit of a little bit of a rut yeah absolutely that would be my and did advice. You, well that's great advice and did you guys like did you try and regularly check in like were you guys doing like I don't know if we did doing... that that well no like, no you know, <laughs> I don't think we you know we we did we did but I think I'm giving that as advice on something I think we could have done more yeah yeah. Do you think like, um, were you doing date nights still? Like, were you guys yes. obviously still building the relationship component of it all? Yeah, I mean, so during the diagnosis phase, so from the moment that they said that's what it was to the moment I had surgery was only six weeks. During that phase, every week I had a new piece of news like, oh, it's not one lump, it's two or oh, that one's actually or a higher grade or or they'd be like good news like oh good news it hasn't spread everywhere else you know it's like it's quite intense what happened so during that phase absolutely not I did I did nothing but read I did nice things like it was summer so I would go to the Lido and I'd swim and I'd lie in the sun and I like I, I felt I just got myself into a very kind of like zen spiritual space yeah love that um meditated a lot did a lot of sound healing mm -hmm. um and then obviously the surgery is, you know, I'm not going to lie, it's completely savage, really, what goes on um, during the hospital phase. And then I had a very specific reconstruction, um, which is called a Dieppe reconstruction, which is where they use your abdominal fat to reconstruct you. So you, I mean, it's amazing, amazing. It's an amazing surgery. Mm -hmm. Um they actually, it's like microsurgery where they reattach all the like vessels to the vessels in the wall of your chest, which is where the shape of your breasts comes from. So once they've finished with it, they hang exactly like yours did. Wow. I remember actually think, not realizing that it was like that and going, <laughs> it's embarrassing. I'm just going to tell you anyway, and going into, <laughs> going in to meet my surgeon for the first time and taking a picture of um, Kate Moss's <laughs> boobs like a really beautiful picture that I found in her book <laughs> I was like can I just give you can I show you what I want them to look like and I, I think about it sometimes now because he didn't say anything he just he was like okay all right cool like he didn't say like no they're just gonna look like yours again like this is a reconstruction what are you doing but I just remember being like I'm showing all my friends being like so this is what I've decided like, like, okay cool like I don't know honestly like I mean I okay can I ask you then the moment of truth like are they are you do yeah. is it is it like Kate Moss? Is it? I mean, I think so. I mean, oh, well, there you go. 
<laughs> I think to be honest, they they look they were they were great boobs anyway. It was very yeah. hard to say right. goodbye to them. I remember that moment oh, wow. very clearly. Mm. But yes, these newer versions mm. are of, you know pretty much the same shape. I went yeah. a little bit bigger because like why not you know go be a silver lining why not yeah, yeah and yeah. I think the benefit of that particular reconstruction is that they feel you know that it's, it's your tummy fat so it's like they feel like the like breasts they don't right. they're not there's no implant or and like if I get really fat they'll get really big with me or if I when I get old like they'll droop and like right. I want all of that you know I didn't yeah. I, don't, I never wanted to be Barbie so no no um, no that's the really good thing about it yeah I love that I didn't know so what's that called it's called D what is it D D E P. so D I E P I think it's okay. Dieppe flap reconstruction that's what I okay. always googled yeah and that's a new is that a newer technology or is this something that they're just I don't think now? it's new no okay um, but it's not the easiest to get because it involves um so you have two consultants you have your like main consultant who does the actual mastectomy of which mm -hmm. I had someone amazing and then they would usually do the implants as well but mm -hmm. in order to do this you need to have a like a plastic surgeon to come in and do that it's like it's, and it's a very specialist thing okay okay so um yeah I was just super lucky to have private health care and they did cover that on oh, amazing. private health care so okay um that was why yeah well, I was just going to ask if it was NHS or if it was or public versus private, mm. but um, I'm glad. I know that, that my that. surgeon practices on the NHS, so it could very well be that in some mm -hmm. cases they do it. I I don't know, um, mm -hmm. but I know that he does he does practice on the NHS, and I, I don't think he does the other reconstruction style. So yeah, yeah to be and were they it's worth asking? Yeah, absolutely. And did you have did you have like during this whole treatment process? Did you have like one sort of point of contact or like mm. who was kind of guiding you through everything or was it just different doctors at different times? Because I think that's yeah. always a that's always the difficulty I had, like dealt helping my dad with health ailments. It was like it felt like there was like, you know, five different people and mm. nobody really knew. Yeah, for maybe it, one. it can be a little bit like that because. You know it's a good thing that everyone specializes in something different with something like this mm -hmm. but then it yes it does it does mean that you end up with a lot of different people so you you have to become the center of the knowledge mm -hmm. like you have to ask as many questions as you want to know about so that you feel like when you go from like your straight consultant who's done the mastectomy who's sort of kind of first diagnosis breast cancer mm -hmm. consultant Mm -hmm. to your radiotherapy specialist to the oncologist who starts talking to you about chemo and other things like that and you know that they, they talk to each other but only really in notes you know so it's not yes. like yeah, so it's yeah, really yeah helpful to have like a really good full understanding of your own personal situation so that you can update those people when you get in there you know yeah don't, don't just sit there while they look through their notes and figure you know just be like this is what's happened and yes hold me and this is what's specific to me and that kind of thing. Yeah. Do you, so were was your um was was Johnny with you the whole time or did you have friends that came with like did you always have someone with you just to help like you know as what? a second ear? I went alone quite a bit and I remember my nurse one day saying like you come here on your own quite a lot and I was just like I just honestly sometimes I just prefer it. I sometimes yeah, just prefer why? to go there on my own and just like deal with it. But I, you know, he definitely came with me a lot. Um, my best friend, Lisa, honestly, she, I mean, she did drive me to, you know, probably the half of the appointments that I had that, that I didn't go by myself. She was, yeah. she was, she was there. I mean, she knew all my consultants by first names. She knew my condition better than I knew oh it my myself. Gosh. I mean, literally, she just like turned into a parent. Like, Lisa, like, outside. We love Lisa. Yeah, we love Lisa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. We really do. She gets Aww. the gold star. Yeah, because I think everyone would everyone would agree with that. She went above and beyond. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That is so amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And so if some, <laughs> let's say someone um, didn't have that, that support mm. system that you had, what would you, how, how would you kind of, what advice would you give them? They're going through a really difficult health issue. I mean, because I haven't had to do that, I don't know, but mm. I can relate in a sense that like, I don't have a huge family network and, you know, friends are incredible and it's amazing that they can be there, but there is a difference because they do have their own lives and their own families to kind of prioritize in. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it's just working out how, what, what is it that, you know, doesn't make you feel lonely and just like doing as much of that as you possibly can. It's, you know, it's, it's not something it's not something you have to have a load of people around you to get through. And some people may choose to actually take it more on their own. Like, mm -hmm. but you know, hopefully, hopefully everyone just has one person that they can at least phone, even if they're not in the same country, it yeah. just is that person that, because I think what gets exhausting is keeping everyone up to date because there's a lot that happens and there's a lot of phases to the process and it's all very complicated. And I think it's quite nice to just have one person that knows everything. So you can call them and be like, so the receptor's eight plus, which is actually like, you know, like actually understands what you're talking about. Um, Cause it gets really like technical and specific. Um, yeah. So it's nice to just like pick someone. So you don't have to talk about it all the time. Yes. Um, but just one person who, who really understands it, like you understand it so that you can just like have those conversations Yes. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't have to take over the phone line 12 hours a night, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Gosh. Well, and I think when you touched on this idea of like, maybe like finding a way not to be lonely, and even you, you went to some appointments by yourself. Do you feel like you, there was like a spiritual element to? I think so. Yeah. I, I think so. Like every, every kind of difficult moment I've had in my life has made me investigate that side of things more mm -hmm. I don't really know how to describe it I think it just like I guess you know being present is um what happens to me if I spend I think for me like meditating sound journeys I hate the word sound healing but I just for people to understand <laughs> what I'm talking about that stuff um and just like reading quite like spiritually but also scientifically mixed books <laughs> yes. um that would actually feel meditative for me and then I know that eventually I would start to feel a little bit like I was glowing or like just or fizzing or yeah that like things I guess just yeah the past and the present weren't really a thing and like everything felt quite light so I was just wow. kind of able to like walk in I mean look I'm not like I wasn't levitating do you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> you weren't I was like I'm going to listen back to this and be like who do you think you are <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know like I'm just trying to I'm trying to put words to the feeling that um a little bit of like extra focus on that side of your interests yes. can make you feel like physiologically and it is hard to explain because it's not as obvious as that and there was no light around me and like uh, you know I wasn't floating and but you can just feel a little bit more like there's a space between the things that come at you and your reactions. There's a space in between that, that you can sort of control it a bit. Yeah. I love that. that. I like no, do you know why? No, <laughs> because I know exactly, I know exactly what you, cause I, okay. So again, around the time my father passed, um, he, I really do. Um, obviously I, my mother was very like, very, um, in her right, she was a spiritual teacher to me in the sense she taught me religion and faith and God. Um, my father taught me just a little bit of a different sort of more of the spiritual stuff, the Eastern Eastern side of it, um, less less specific to like religion, okay? Yeah. And both have value in my opinion. I will say though that um, when I started, and ironically, my mother started really telling me about meditation. I was really stressed at the time, a few years. And when I started meditating, I was like, this is a next level existence mm. because tapping into, well, that's my opinion, but tapping into the spiritual part of us that is like, well, anyway, this is, I know it's like all knowing. And it's that sort yeah. of like that intuition that you're mm. connected to the world, something bigger. Mm. And I, there was this exercise that I learned where you can like, and I, that's why it, it made me think of this when you were describing this, this idea that when you're able to separate 
ego from mm. soul or whatever it is that you're, and yeah. you can see the space exactly like you said, you can see mm. that space, but it requires a lot of like inwardness to, yeah. or quietness, stillness to be able to, to find that. But yeah. I think the more you practice it, the more you are able to, to realize this is like an outward reaction. Mm. And it doesn't yeah. have to, it doesn't have to go straight through to the, to the core of yeah. like the soul. If, if you believe totally. in souls. No, yeah. totally. I, I also like, I like to look at all of the spirituality stuff with quite a scientific eye because it yes. helps to kind of prove my point. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, there's a, there's a lot of very intriguing evidence on the effects of, you know, frequencies for instance but then within that is also like meditation and like mantra chanting because what you're doing is creating certain resonances within you and yeah. you know I watched a documentary the other day and they were like you're calling in the spirits and I was like if someone had put it to me like that I would have just been like you know what that's actually not really what I want to do today thank you <laughs> but I learned about it as sending certain like resonant messages through your physiology Mm. and how you know picking certain mantras that fit your own physiology and that can balance out your own and then you get into the whole neurology side of it and it starts being yes. about your brainwave states and mm -hmm. and you know this this stuff is I mean it's science to me it's science and it's spirituality there's like if there wasn't a layer of it I couldn't quite understand it wouldn't be as exciting and mystical yes but at the same time I think there was some scientist at one point that said like every scientific fact was magic once because actually mm. you come up with something and you're like that sounds mad and then a scientist just like goes at it for years and years and years and eventually it's proven and then it's science so yes who knows I... we'll get to with all that but this this stuff they will do you know like there's yes people, Dr. Joe Dispenza particularly love like, Joe Dispenza you know that's that is science like there's yes. you know he's a very spiritual person of course but like what yes. he's doing is scientific research and yes it's fascinating and I read a lot so of that fascinating as well, did you yeah. do you feel like do you feel like that helped that helped you in like the Definitely. healing process yeah. yeah yeah it was essential to me it was like it was like an obsession for me to just yeah try and understand more and more and you know I guess like initially I've always been into alternative medicines and just just like cookie stuff anything goes like you know if I feel you know I'm just really interested and not all of it makes sense to me and some of it I'm like no thanks yeah but you know <laughs> if if something resonates with me then I love exploring it meditation being one of it and like mm -hmm. when this stuff happens people start suggesting things to you and you start reading books and then you're you know before you know it you're trying like kinesiology and you're trying this and you're trying that and there's a million things and then there's a lot of like this cured cancer and this cured cancer and like mm. you start to feel a bit like there's a sort of cult out there that you know is actually saving people's lives and you're like oh my god and then and then you realize that actually that's not exactly what's going on and it's that because it gets confusing because there's so many different practices and you're like well which one cures cancer like tell me like and then you're just like no no hang on I have to step back from this for a minute because none of them are curing cancer and they're all doing the same thing they are all trying to help you get to a place within your body itself to heal itself to give your own body its best opportunity at healing itself because also it's important to remember that doing your best your body doing its best may sometimes not be enough you know it's like this whole like this interesting practice cures this like I think that's a very dangerous narrative yes but I think and I think like if you find anyone who's kind of trying to say to you that something cures something and pushing you down this one road, I think you should also mm -hmm. be a little bit wary of that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I think they all do a very similar thing. And it's mm -hmm. and it, 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 it is all doing exactly the same thing, in fact. So it's just about you finding what resonates best with you and what you want to explore. Yes. And just it's like a constant journey into your own body. And yes. like that's through food, through chemicals, through understanding what drugs are doing to you and whether you do or do not want to take those drugs, like as yes. in pharmaceutical suggestions in the cancer yes. world and, you know, acupuncture, 
And then I did have a really wonderful stint in an Ayurvedic hospital in Kerala, which was insanely amazing. And I would recommend that to anyone going through anything or nothing. Just do it at some point in your life because it's incredible. Okay, so well, this is this is the perfect segue because I wanted to talk. Yeah, we're segueing (laughs) into it because I think this is so well well put. And so you you obviously you did do the the Western sort of um, you know Western sort of traditional um, route to treat the the cancer, and so it was yeah yes yeah. And then what happened after that? So do you is it is a wait is a waiting period? to see so after the surgery you're just focused on recovering from the surgery because and you kind of I think in that moment you forget a little bit that you had cancer and you 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 kind of flip into I'm dealing with this surgery Mm -hmm. and like the rest of it becomes a bit and then you know eventually they see you they do pathology they check you know whether it's spread to other areas but those areas they have actually removed already, but they just want to see if it was like kind of like going on a bit of a journey. Um, they did find like a tiny little microscopic bit in like a lymph node. Um, and then their advice was chemotherapy, mm-hmm. which, um, and they, it was a preventative measure. So, mm-hmm. you know, I went into my appointment, the situation I was presented with was, you are cancer free. So that's how they put it. So there is no evidence of cancer in your body now and you are cancer free. So Mm -hmm. that's a very lucky diagnosis to come out the other side of things with because often you're not as lucky as that and it kind of made it to areas that they aren't able to remove and you know that's what can happen. So that was a very positive thing. Um, Their suggestion was to do chemotherapy. Um, She said to me, look at it as a mopping up process Mm. I kind of understand that I just couldn't get my head around it though I think and this is this is where you know it's a very personal choice and if anyone came to me ever and said what do you think I should do I would just refuse to answer that question because I think it's there's a risk involved in choosing to not do chemotherapy as a preventative measure for it returning Mm -hmm. they presented with me with some statistics in my particular case which is everyone is very specific by the time you get to that point you know so much your your personal case I think Mm -hmm. they said it was a five percent improvement on my chance of it not coming back if that makes sense okay and to me it didn't feel like enough so I said I didn't want to do it I just didn't want to do it and what was the what was the reasoning for not wanting to do it was it the the fear of what it could do to your body or was yeah, it absolutely yeah mm-hmm. obviously you know I've always I've always been very health conscious and you know I was very afraid of where I would be at the end of a a, a sort of chemical treatment like that over like half a year um also as a female there are some major in fact almost certain risks of infertility um I guess if you get a diagnosis at an older age or you've already had children, this isn't necessarily something that you have to worry about, but you know, I, that's not me. So that was quite a big one for me. I wasn't ready to, to, to do that. Yeah. Um, And I think honestly, just, it didn't feel right in, it it was like, I never, yeah, I just, I I knew I wouldn't do that. I Mm -hmm. think the only way I would have is if there had, been something left to continue trying to fix you know like they'd found some here or it had spread here or because of course then I think for me to just walk out of that office and go I'm not doing it I I don't think I would have done that because yeah that sounds that sounds like something I wouldn't have done but you know I, I, I just weighed it up yeah and it didn't feel right for me so so I said no, and I got a lot of stick for it, and I still get stick for it now from them all. Okay. Um, like your support system? No, actually. Oh, from the doctors? All, yeah, 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 from the consultants. In the nicest possible way, okay. you know, they, they're, they're like your concerned aunt who's just like, why won't you, you know? She's very traditional, my main consultant, very traditional, and I totally get why she wishes I would just do it. Um, Even now? 
Yeah, I mean, she she mentions it when I go back in. Um, there was also a course of hormone therapy drugs that I didn't want to take as well. Um, she goes at me more for that. I think she's let the chemo thing go, but she goes at me about the drugs when I go in every time now, yeah. Oh, what's the hormone drug supposed to do? Um, so it suppresses um, the hormones, which um, in my case, because I was estrogen and progesterone receptive. So that means that estrogen and progesterone are the hormones or are what feeds my particular cancer. Okay. So it's a hormone therapy to just shut that all off. So they wanted to give me monthly injections that shut down your ovaries. And then also a drug called tamoxifen, um, which kind of cuts the supply of estrogen in your body. And I don't, I probably not explain mm. that right, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of side effects um, that are similar to putting yourself through the menopause. So I think that's probably what it would have felt like. It's just going okay. through the menopause. Um, yes. Physically, I would be going through the menopause. Okay. Um, so again, you, you're not able to childbear. Mm -hmm. Um it is also a World Health Organization recognized carcinogen, which really freaked me out. And they do, they're very honest mm. about it. And the percentage, the percentage risk of it causing cancer in other areas of your body mm -hmm. is so low. It's like minuscule, but mm -hmm. it was still there. And I couldn't get my head around that either. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but I I I know it works. I know it works. And um I know a lot of people who have taken it and you know there are some side effects but they're completely manageable mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm definitely not here to tell people not to do that no no all. of course what yeah I yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and that's a, the question I have is like when you made the decision did you did you meditate on it did you how did you like did you go inward or were you talking to yeah. a lot of people your friends I don't, I, I don't think I ever really wavered it was it was it was like it was like there was a stillness around the decision that had been made already. And I let, I let the conversations, I let myself still go through the process and I still did all the research and I still listened to people. Maybe I just, you know, made my mind up. Maybe nothing was going to change my mind. I don't know, but I just, I felt so settled in that decision. And so, and, and I've never, I've never since been like, I wonder if that was the right decision. Wow. So I feel wow. okay with it. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I do, I guess, though, have to live with a worry of the risks that I maybe took more so than others who had gone through that treatment. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, those risks remain regardless. Mm -hmm. So I also think if they'd said to me, if you have chemo no, now, it will never come back. It will mm -hmm. never come back ever, 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 for sure. That would mm -hmm. also have been a very different decision, but that's yeah. also not the case. So, so I right. think that's, I think that, that lifelong, like, is it going to come back? Yeah. I think that's probably, that's probably the bit that you have to toughen up over the most, to be honest, yes. because it really feels like it steals a little bit of joy from you <laughs> mm. having to, having to constantly wonder um, mm -hmm. But it gets less and less. And, I, and I'd and i say I don't think about it like I used to think about it anymore. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which means give me another couple of years and I might not think about it. Before. Let's see. <laughs> well, can I ask you a personal question? Have you thought about about freezing your eggs then? Like yes, at I, this did point? I did you do that. I did. That. Oh, good. Yeah. OK. Yeah. I did yeah. do that. Yeah. OK. That so was that's fun. Always... No. <laughs> 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 I did it really soon after everything. I literally went into radiotherapy, yeah. which is actually quite intense. Like mm -hmm. it's totally fine, but it's also just like you know, you do feel a little bit like a specimen. You're sort of on like a very big bed and everything's enormous. The machines are just enormous. Like you just feel like a mouse in a lab, <laughs> like that they may potentially decide that cutting you open is a good idea. Like it's just, it's so intense in there. So that, you know, and it's, and it's relentless because it's every day. For three weeks so yes. that was a lot and then I went yeah. straight into the egg freezing after that because I was in like get everything done mode you know yeah 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 well yeah. well I mean now you have this nice you know your eggs are there so they're you know, there exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. they're chilling <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um 
And so, okay, so now getting into like, so I think you you chose maybe more like you were like intuitively, you reflected on it, you knew it wasn't the right decision to do the chemo. But then I think subsequently, you, you then, I think you, I remember you telling me that um, something about your friends doing something mm. really nice for you. And yes. like, sending you to this like, beautiful ashram or something like that, it was, it was honestly, my see, I told you I have the best friends in the world. So That's they all nice. got together, led by Sean and Zoe, I think. Um, and they put a kind of like page together, you know, one of those like just giving pages. I was like, don't show me. You know what I mean? Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. And I think in the end, like 40 people donated or something. I was like, who are these people? I, like, but I, wow. I really was just like, that was a really, really mad moment because I knew that my close friends would always want to help. But then like, you know when my friends were hustling a bit wider and I could see that other people actually cared enough. I was like, that is absolutely heartwarming. Like there were a couple of people on there that I haven't properly met, but that we know each other through, you know, there's a, there's a connection, but just like for someone like that to be like, yeah, I'll like, you know, that's so nice. So beautiful. Yeah. Aww. It was really amazing. And they, so they got the money together and um, yeah, to send me over to Kerala to Soma theorem, which is the, first actually Ayurvedic hospital in okay. Kerala which is where all of them are so that's where the practice is kind of original from. and how well how did they find was it that was it, so it was, it was Sean and Paige you said and Sean, so Sean and Zoe Sean, Sean and Zoe, and Zoe. They, Sean they were Zoe. the leaders of the of the fundraising oh <laughs> go girls yes and so then and then and then you guys I found the place you've okay so they were like yeah. what do you like were they well how, how did that come about was it like I we want to do was something a bit for of a you mess. like yes, okay. uh, you know I was um the radiotherapy just didn't make me feel physically very good it just mm -hmm. uh, but also or I was just exhausted from everything apparently mm -hmm. everything was over but that's not really how it feels who knows mm -hmm. but I was just mm -hmm. a bit of a mess and they were like what do you need and I was like what I need because I have another friend called Nick Baird who has a lot of knowledge in this area from his own experiences. And he went and did Panchakarma, which is what the course is called when you go there and you go through a certain physical process with them. Okay. Um, and, you know, I learned a lot about what that does for your body. And I just really wanted to do that. So I told them that that's what I really wished I could do. And then yeah. it kind of turned into like, I reckon we can make that happen. And I was like, I mean, as if but then I don't know you don't know Sean so actually I'm not surprised at all that I ended up in India at the end of it all to be honest <laughs> amazing amazing oh my gosh what amazing friends yeah amazing. okay tell us about the Panchakana wait is that right Panchakama yeah Panchakama with, with, an, okay. with an M yeah okay. um so it's basically just a like deep body purification detoxification kind of course process um in Ayurvedic medicine, they treat you just like mind, body, spirit, soul, all of it, you know, 100% natural, of course. The diet is very important. Um, I'm not going to go into it because I can't remember the difference, but, but basically what they say is that like all foods have a particular energy, but also like everything has a particular energy and there are three different energy groups and each person or individual kind of resonates most with one of those energy groups, or sometimes you can be like one and a bit of another. And when things are out of balance in your life or your like physical health or your mental health, then it's because, you know, what you're meant to be at balance with these three energies is off balance. They will then kind of feed that with the food. So the, <laughs> the energy that you're missing you are told to go on a diet of that. So you go into this big kitchen and they've got like all the like big curries are labeled with like the different names. Wow. I should have written them down so I could tell you them. But anyway, I'll put them in the notes afterwards. Yes. So you're kind of put on a diet that's supposed to replenish the energy that you're missing, essentially, so that you can wow. come back into balance with yourself. Again, it's the same thing of like, you know, if your body is in balance, it can operate properly and it can start to fix things that it needs to fix. There's also the Ayurvedic medicine side of things. So they grow on site a lot of very potent medicines. I mean, these medicines are serious and the doctors are serious as well. You know, they're there with their stethoscopes. Like they are doctors. They're not like. 
it's not like yeah. a retreat, you know, like they are for, for them, it's their doctors, you know. Right. Um, yeah. And they prescribe you with these medicines. They are all natural, but they're very they're very strong and they're and they're kind of it's not like you get given like a leaf. It's like there's probably about 50 plants like you know, run through a certain process and like put into this like deep, sticky black liquid that you have to swallow a capsule of in the morning that makes you feel like you're hot for five minutes. And like, it's a, it's, it's incredible. It's really, really intense and amazing. Wow. Um, and then there's the physical side of things where you have the Ayurvedic treatments and that's kind of, you know, at one point I found myself kind of like lying on this big mahogany bed, like naked with a hairnet on being covered in, rice pudding which made me laugh so much I could not like they they found me quite funny because I I did find things I just you know as I said I laugh at everything but I was yeah. just really laughing about this one just because it smelled so obviously rice pudding <laughs> but it what it was was medicated milk and milk absorbs into your skin in a different way than water so it, like it did make total sense and everything else they put on me was like very specifically medicated stuff but this what that just made me laugh because it just did smell like it smelled like ambrosia. It just did. And it made me laugh so much. <laughs> but, you know, you, you have, I think, like three hours of treatments a day. And it's it's all kind of this sort of plant based medicine stuff in like milks, oils, um, kind of like sludgy stuff that they all kind of like wrap to you. You have to leave that on for a while. And it's all very wow. specific to your to your own wow. needs. Wow. And then there's then there's the yoga then there's the chanting meditation and I mean you're very busy but you feel this, incredible <laughs> that's, I, I, it sounds like it and that's that's yeah. outside so you have the three hours of the actual treatments and then you do like the yoga and mm. other um holistic alternative treatments basically yeah and how long were you there for I stayed for three weeks I think a full panchakarma if you really want to do the full body purification they say probably six you want to do wow but you can go for one week and just do like an ayurvedic cleanse mm -hmm. it kind of depends i think i wouldn't say to anyone like if you don't have a long period of time don't go mm -hmm. i think after four days i felt different wow and so yeah. how much okay and then how much is if one was budgeting for a week let's say there mm. what are we oh, is it, it can like vary it can, it can vary. really, 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 really vary. Okay. <laughs> no, but like, I think I picked this one because I just didn't want to get it wrong. And this is like one of the most, one of the, mm. it's the original and it was probably more expensive than some others. But mm. once I got there and I started meeting people who were traveling around and I heard about a lot of other like really good, it's just, you just don't want to go on Google and find like a budget Ayurvedic hospital. Do you know what I mean? Sure. It's not about that. <laughs> but if you, if like, if you can ask around and, you know, I, I know that where my friend Nick goes is half that for twice the time. So I, mm. I think that, you know, if you do your research, you could find somewhere that's probably like a thousand a week, but it's full board. So it's all your food. It's your thing, all your treatment. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money, but it's also that's a Everything. lot of treatment. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Fantastic. And what do you think was the best when you look back at that, what was the best treatment, the Ayurvedic treatment that you really like just for you was enjoyable, so enjoyable? I mean, I did have one pretty mad chanting meditate because they did they did the chakra chanting. So they had like a like a sort of chant for every different chakra and this like gorgeous little girl was leading it. And it was just like really beautiful. So that was that was probably like my highlight moment. And then in terms of the treatments, I think the medicine really fascinated me, actually, because mm -hmm. I could feel a real difference and I could feel how strong it all was. And it just like, you know, it felt like it was really doing something. And then I think because because I had a physical thing going on and I could see something changing, like mm -hmm. inflammation just went away. But then also we know about inflammation within the body that that causes a lot of problems. So, you know, like inflammation was going down for me physically to be able to see, which was really nice for me to have. How? Well, I, I was very inflamed when I got there all around, like under my arms and, you know, like just it was stiff and and, and okay. squishy. I think there was a lot of liquid 
flying about you know it's that vibe yeah and and it really all just like to- totally calmed down just to calm down everything stopped hurting a lot less wow it was amazing and yeah so when you get when you came back then did you did you get out go through a checkup with your Mm. consultant or no? I mean I, I have to go every six months for us for a for a scan mm. and mm. they've all been clear so far mm. um I don't know if it's about putting that down to anything alternative I've done in particular you know just think my only goal really is to just keep my body operating in the best way that it possibly can mm-hmm. um but also like that actually hasn't involved becoming like a teetotal vegan, interestingly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I love steak too much to not do that. So mm-hmm. I still eat like good quality meat from good sources. And, you know, I think that I think and actually when I left the Ayurvedic hospital, she told me to eat a lot of mutton, which basically is lamb. But they wouldn't have said steak because they don't eat cows because they're sacred in India. So essentially right. what she meant was red, red meat, um, just because I have low blood pressure. Um, so I think, I think, you know, I think there are, there are some sort of one size fits all kind of like health tactics that actually I really think the best thing to do is just to learn as much as you can about yourself. Cause if you have low blood pressure, you actually have to eat more salt and mm-hmm. that's not something anyone gets told by anyone in a health right capacity is it but I actually have to put lots of like nice sea salt but Mm -hmm. salt on my food and that's like every doctor would be like lower your salt salt intake you know so right and then you might find that you're allowed to keep some of the things you like which is really essential because we have to have fun in life still you know yeah enjoyment in all of this (laughs) (laughs) and have you shared um some of the Ayurvedic uh, practices with like Johnny and and your girlfriends like <laughs> I mean he you... loved the rice pudding story because he loves yeah. rice pudding so he he was the reason <laughs> laughing at that actually because I was like you know he's he's he, he doesn't like want to do these things himself it's not his bag mm-hmm. um he loves that I do it but you know it's just like quite funny to imagine him seeing me there he would have just been like what are you doing <laughs> um, um but yeah I, I mean I find myself talking about it with people who like you know, like within a friend group, not necessarily my closest friends, sometimes people will just ask me about this sort of thing because I think people are intrigued and I like that I'm able to to tell them how that was. Yeah. And yeah, I think all my friends would love to do it. Um, it's just, it's a bit of a commitment, isn't it? So maybe people need to be given a reason. I mean, I I suspect a lot of listeners. Um, there are a lot of listeners who are, I think, will be very inclined, and they'll be searching. That's so you're so going to have to give us the link for that um, for that beautiful yes. hospital, please. I will. Um, I will. Yeah, I want to go. I'm like, oh, that sounds. Amazing. I know, right? I want to go again. I'd, I'd I'd love to go every January for two weeks. I would love uh, to do that. Um, yeah. But you know, I didn't just go, so it's clearly already not happening. <laughs> It's February and I didn't go. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Bianca, looking back at the last, you know, couple of years, you've gone through quite a, a bit, you know, big changes in life. Um, you know, what do you think the biggest life lesson <laughs> you can take away from everything over the last few years? I think, I mean, enormous question. Mm. Um, but I just think like the fact that just just realizing how resilient you actually really are. It's not really nice to have to learn that. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, in the moment, there are times where you're like, honestly, am I ever going to be the same again? And I don't want that to scare anyone, but like you do feel a bit like you lose yourself. And then to have more recently felt like that's not the case. And actually, I'm, you know, I've got this and I'm, I may even be a better version of myself for however like annoying that sounds. Like, I think just the confidence to know that whatever happens, I will actually be fine, which is such a cheesy way of putting it. But it's I've never known it to be so true, really, that like we will actually always get through stuff like we have to. This is the thing. So many people said to me during this, like, you're so brave, you're so brave. And it's like, no, you don't realize I don't have a choice. Like there's there's no option for me to not deal with this. So I am dealing with it. And sometimes you just get shoved through life. And you just mm-hmm. have to deal with it. Yeah. And like 
that it, it it's gonna it's gonna stop like the, the the hell will stop for a bit at some point and maybe it'll start again at some point but like there are troughs of the shittest parts of your life you know as well as the peaks yeah so well it's like um I feel like I listen to a lot of Jim Rohn I don't know if yeah, you know him I don't and- actually- Oh, Jim Rohn. Oh, he's so good. I'm going to, I'm going to send you some videos Please. and he, um, he talks about the seasons of life and, and yeah. it's true. We all have seasons, yeah. right. And, so, and, um, so you're in, you know, enjoy the season that you're in now because you've obviously, Please. yeah. Yeah. No, you should never get too complacent. Watch what goes down like next week. Who knows? No, you know? <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> No, I think you're in a beautiful season and I hope yeah, you. you enjoy it. Yeah. So we're at the uh, the final yes. part of the podcast. And oh, it's no, what are you going to do to me? No, no, no. It's Ask all me, good. Like, if I was an animal, what would I be or something? <laughs> well, this is the conditioner questionnaire, which oh, right. is okay. Okay. Yes, a fun feature where we ask guests to reflect on their past, present and future. And so it's just like quick rapid fire three questions, no right or wrong answer, just giving you the opportunity to kind of reflect on, on all areas of your life. So are you up for it? I'm up for it. Okay. (laughs) So looking back at your past, um, if you could give your 15 year old self some advice. advice, Yeah. What would it be? You know what? Because this question comes out sometimes, doesn't it? I always listen to people's answers. I I feel like I've got a lot to learn from my 15 year old self. Like, the, the fearlessness in youth and like the innocence of really, really youth. But like, you know, when you're just like 15, 16, 17, like you, you're just fearless. And mm-hmm. I actually feel like in later life, I, w- I would really like my later life person to listen to that younger, fearless kid sometimes and just that. be like, just go for it. Stop thinking. Roll, you it. know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. flipped your answer on you, but that's probably why I genuinely do want no to one has... from that girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Actually. actually, I think we have had one guest who said something similar, like she was actually looking back at her herself and she was like in awe of how cool her younger self was. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she... yeah, um, exactly. She's like, yeah. Yeah, she's wicked, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> love it. And um, okay, so if you could have dinner, this is in your reflecting on your present moment. If you could have dinner with anyone in the world tonight, anyone in the world, I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of like, you know, dinner with random strangers. So (laughs) I'm not going to just pick some mad celebrity because I probably just find the whole thing very awkward. But maybe because I'm looking at his book, I'll go with Dr. Joe Dispenza and I will invite Mm. you because I know Please. you want to come to that dinner. Yes. Oh my and God. I want to hear <laughs> all about his nutty technology that's going to change the world. Right. Um, we would yeah. like to do a meditation together. Be like, Joe, Good. run us through meditation right now. You know, I want to see his machines. I want to be <laughs> into his machine room. I want to <laughs> yeah. understand all about this, like bio resonance frequencies. Oh stuff. my gosh. I know. Right. I want to deep dive into it. that with him. Mm. I just, the bioresonance I was yeah. like I just discovered this like last week and I was like what yeah. is this I've done the scan I've done the bioresonance feedback scan so and? that was yeah I mean it's it's you know it's 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 it tells you a lot hmm. it's Russian technology okay. um, and it's been proven in quite a lot of cases actually to to be able to pick up on things I think they've gone into some hospitals and done it on people with existing diagnosis to see if it picks up the same thing. And it does. I mean, it picked up wow. um, a parasite that I had when I was younger. That's like so rare. It's a joke. So I don't know how they would have ever known, you know? So, wow. I think I, think I believe in that in a big yeah, way, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but then, you know, what most people do here is they treat it with home toxicology. So that's, you know, that's cool. And I've done that. And, but I think, what I'm really interested in is the frequency treatment in response. Mm. They start to channel different frequencies into your body to kind of try to correct imbalances that are causing, yeah. like that's the stuff that, you know, I'm not going to speak yeah. on because I don't know enough about it, but I'm really interested in all that. Same, 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 same. Sometimes just, I listen to tell it. Us it no, right. So yeah. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Sometimes yeah. I, I listen to it before I go to bed. I don't know if it's real, 
Mm. but um or it's just like psychosomatic I don't know but like I'll go into <laughs> YouTube and I'll be like best frequency for like DNA repair you know and I'll just yeah. listen to that I don't know whether it's true or not but um, I listen to so I've had quite a lot of sound healing from this amazing woman in America called Katie Rose and she's just doing nuts things and she creates these sound patterns I'll send them to you yeah do please and they're they're for different things so if you know if if you do believe that frequencies can alter certain things, or at least I think what they're doing is kickstarting things. And I think it's about, I think it's about your, I think it's about detecting frequencies within your own kind of like bio field mm -hmm. and then matching them. And when, mm -hmm. when frequencies are matched with each other, they neutralize or so there's something about that. I'll learn more. The next so time. interesting. Yeah, 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 totally. Anyway, Perfect. Joe Dispenza is my dinner answer. Amazing. And I'm coming with, please. Um, gotcha. Yes, okay. absolutely. <laughs> okay. So future looking, what's one goal you want to achieve in the next five years that you want to share? Oh my God. Um, I will choose to have my ballet days flexibility back in my yoga sessions oh, and just yeah. being a, like really right back in there with the yoga. Cause I had to stop exercise for a long time. So I do it now and I'm a bit rickety and I just really want that to loosen up. So can I just have some serious flexibility in my body? Love it. That's what I want. I want my, like, if my legs not up here in five yeah. years time. I failed. Oh no, 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 no. I know. <laughs> I'm sure. You know what? You seem like one of the most determined, uh, yeah, <laughs> like women that I have ever met determined. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> very like very focused and committed and determined and I I I definitely think you're going to do that so I'm so excited too. I'm yeah. gonna like watch your Instagram for that yeah, while I just like like be and then we're gonna... to do splits all over again at the age of 38 great <laughs> yeah yes 100% yeah, I have... fine I'll post it it's cool I have I have a wild idea that I want to do um like a handstands <laughs> oh no that's good I mean I'm no. I've never wanted to want to do that because I know I can't but like if you can do that <laughs> That is sick because, like, I like I would love to be able to do that. The, you know, no. the end of the yoga class when it's like shame phase, where everyone's like, "You can just go into child's pose for a bit," while everyone over here just like <laughs> things about and it's like acrobats, and you're like, <laughs> "It's just like it's really last minutes of shame yeah. in the yoga class." Exactly. Oh. Well, that's anyway. So I have, I have, but that for me, that seems like really out of the question because I've never been able to do that. So right. I, but I feel like you, you will, you know, you've done it before. You can do it. Easy, I know easy. that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to get back there. Yeah. You will. You will. <laughs> um anyway well thank you so much thank honestly Bianca, so we could have kept talking forever I really I know, really yeah. love this this has been so so nice so thank you thank for being you. on the podcast and just sharing oh, so it. so vulnerably with everyone <laughs> um your story and and all the advice and I hope that it's I know it's going to help some people listening who are going through their own trial right now or um winter if you will mm. like Jim Brown says and um yeah I hope that they can draw some inspiration from you and I uh, so. yeah I, I am so. I'm very inspired by you oh, and so you. if anyone wants to connect with you mm. what's the best way to do that um probably Instagram mm -hmm. we'll yeah drop, do you want to we'll drop you? we'll drop some ads in the thing underneath Perfect. yeah yes I'll yeah. think about the best way to because maybe it's email in this instance I don't know I haven't thought yeah. about it but we'll yeah. make sure there's some way to get hold of me in the notes Perfect. Okay. Amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Bianca. Mwah. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Have and a we'll lovely evening and weekend. Soon. And yeah, take care. Thank you. Bye, Bianca. Bye. 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 If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe and check out this video here.